Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kia Simone, and we are here to discuss <laughs> the almighty love and marriage Huntsville. Okay, now listen, I'm gonna just say, I know uh, there were a great many of you that were quite pissed off with me last week. Um, I love you anyway, honey, and you gonna probably be mad this week too, because uh, the way that this episode opened up was some absolute bull. Okay, and what I do over here is I call it like I see it, all right? This is just my opinion. This show is for entertainment and educational purposes as far as I'm concerned. We'll have our difference of opinion in the comments like we do. Before we get started, I want to thank my almost 7,400 veteran and new subscribers. And if you are not in that number, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Well, I mean, we done had this talk a long time ago about how you gonna keep coming to my house and sitting in my room and sipping my tea and stuff and just, you know, kicking it and kiki kiki -ki and just won't hit subscribe. Why would you do that? Like, why would you do that? But, you know, I'm gonna leave it in your lap. It's up to you, you know. I would just strongly suggest and request that you please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Okay, thank you. Let's get into it. So, uh, this episode kicks off with Tiffany going by Mel's house. And we know why she going over there. She really going over there to talk about the book signing. But she starts off by, you know, having a conversation with Mel about the sleepover and how much she enjoyed the sleepover other than the encounter that she had with Stormy. She recounts to Mel how the interaction with Stormy went and, you know, basically trying to figure out what is Stormy's issue with her. And Mel kind of takes this very middle ground and I just find it very, very interesting that Mel has a very, very different reaction to the Tiffany versus Stormy dynamic than she does to the Tiffany versus Destiny dynamic. To me, the Tiffany versus Stormy makes less sense than the Tiffany versus Destiny. To me, I would expect that Mel would have more of the reaction she had to the whole Tiffany versus Destiny thing with Tiffany and Stormy. Because why does Stormy really have an issue with Tiffany? What is what what's, what's the issue? But that's a whole nother subject. I didn't go in too far, too fast. So Mel's response to it is, well, you know, listen, everybody doesn't get along and I think everybody should learn the fine art of not getting along. And it's okay if y'all talk and decide y'all ain't for each other. And so they move on to talking about the book signing that Martel had seen Lewis and invited Lewis to the book signing. They went as a family and they were surprised when they got there and the kids weren't there. Mel responds to her by saying, well, I was made aware of, not asked, but made aware of this book signing or event maybe a day or two prior to it happening on my week. We also had a death in the family and I was going to this funeral. And then she kind of starts explaining how when you've been in a situation with a person who doesn't respect boundaries, you have to teach them boundaries. And she's been disrespected for a really long time. And so Tiffany says, well, I would like to challenge you to not make your decisions or to try to not make your decisions based on the history and baggage. And Mel cuts her off to say, well, no, no, no. I have to make decisions based on the history and baggage because my history is recent. My divorce is less than a year old. And so I'm, you know, she basically justifies what Tiffany is trying to kind of warn her not to do. And Tiffany says, you know, I'm kind of surprised at your reaction because he seemed really sad and your reaction is really different. There's always his side, her side, and the truth. And Mel cuts her off again to say, well, no, my side is going to always be the truth because I don't lie. Well, well, baby, we've seen you not remember, which we knew was a lie, but let's just keep on going. When Tiffany says to her, you know, that he seemed really sad that y'all weren't there, Mel says, well, you know, I wasn't invited, so you can take that y'all part out. Well, that clears up a lot of the people who were saying um, the whole reason for not taking the kids is because this was a ploy to buy Martel to film 
with Mel. Well, Mel is saying she wasn't invited. The kids were invited. And then Mel goes into this political speech about how so many women in her position, when they walk away, the men still try to control them. This is not about some women's empowerment leadership role that's trying to be played. This is somebody trying to have a conversation with you about the unknown factors, about putting your children first. That's what this conversation is about. And what is being justified is being vindictive. Like, no, I have every right to be vindictive because X, Y, and Z. That's what's really being said. So to further give perspective to what Tiffany is trying to say, Tiffany starts to explain to Mel that, you know, listen, I understand because I've been divorced myself, went through all the ups and downs of it. Um, and unfortunately, he passed away. And let me tell you something. This conversation with Mel and Tiffany and the level of insensitivity, the level of insincerity, the level of immaturity and sanctimoniousness of Mel, it was, I'm sorry, it was disgusting. It was absolutely disgusting. I don't even like Tiffany. Tiffany gets on my nerves most of the times. But Tiffany was literally being vulnerable. And she was being vulnerable vulnerable, and explaining that, listen, he passed away. And before he passed away, I left him. And the reason I left him is because we were struggling so hard financially. And I didn't want that financial struggle. I wanted something different. I wanted something more. And to watch this man go to work from 4 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night and we were getting nowhere was just, it was too much for me. And so as Tiffany is pouring her heart out about the situation, Mel cuts her off to say, okay, so long story short, you wanted a different life and lifestyle than he was able to provide. So you said that I'm out. I need more money. Tiffany responds by saying, I was selfish and I took advantage of a really unfortunate situation. I'm going to tell you, there is a lesson right there in those words. I was selfish and I took advantage of an unfortunate situation. So Tiffany explains that, you know, he was just this amazing person that loved her and her child unconditionally uh, and that she should have been a better wife. And she knew that this person was her soulmate. Mel interrupts her again to say, so he just loved you. And you just broke his heart. And then she has the nerve to hug Tiffany and comfort her as she starts to cry. This is the full demonstration that Tiffany was never a friend of Melody's. Tiffany was a pawn in Melody's game. This is not how a friend treats a friend being vulnerable. This is a person who is pissed off that you dare attempt to correct them. And so now she is taking this kindness, this vulnerability, she is taking it as weakness and she is going to attack now. That's exactly what she was doing. She was literally attacking this person because they were being vulnerable in a moment of telling her, you might not be 100% right. And let me tell you what you might be up against because she, her kids, her child can't make more memories with his father. The option is not available. Warning comes before destruction. And this girl is sitting here and willing to say, look, I messed up. I messed up bad. Please let me give you a piece of advice. And all you know how to do in that moment is throw that pink dagger in your mouth. That's all you know how to do. I don't see it for her. 
for those who, and when you get in my car, you just don't like male. You're right. I do not like condescending, insincere, disrespectful, phony people. It's, it's fake. It's perfunctory. It's, it's, I, I, I was very disgusted at this particular interaction. Let's be clear. We don't wish nothing on nobody. You know, I don't want nothing to happen to nobody. I want everybody to, to live and be merry. But life happens. And until you have lost someone, sometimes you don't know how real, how temporary, how uh, ephemeral life is. And it's not to say that it would even be that deep, but you have to be careful about the decisions you make today because you don't know what tomorrow holds and you don't know how those decisions affect tomorrow. So Tiffany goes on to say how, you know, she feels like she's a much better wife to Lewis than she was to her first husband because of that experience. And because of the experience she's had, she now knows on the other side of this whole thing that money does not buy happiness. She said, the thing is, though, I had to go through that whole process, that whole life experience to really get that lesson. And basically, that's true for everybody. We got to go through it to get to it. And she going to have to go through it to get her lesson. Um, but I really feel like Tiffany was trying to give her a word of advice from a very real place. And, you know, all you can do is put the word out there and let them do with it what they will. Moving on. Next up is Tisha goes to Kimmy's house. Child. Kimmy has invited Tisha over so that they can hash out the comments that were made at the reunion when Kimmy said that she would not be friends with Tisha if they were not related. Kimmy basically wants to clear that up and say that's not really what she meant. She was kind of in the heat of frustration and she does not want to wash her hands of Tisha. Uh, you know, she does love her like a sister. And it was really nice, actually, to see them get together and make up. And, you know, and Kimmy to say, listen, I was really just, I was aggravated. I was real pissed off. Y'all was getting on my last damn nerve. And I said what I said. I meant the aggravation and the frustration, but... I didn't mean to hurt you because I love you. That's not the intent. What my intent was is to make you understand that I'm not about to go back and forth with you. I don't wanna, I'm not arguing with you. And that is so Aquarius. We ain't one place we ain't going is back and forth. All right, all right. So Tisha asked Kimmy, how was your honeymoon? Three and a half years at. And Kimmy talks about, you know, they had a really good time and it was such a good time that I would like to go back as a group. And speaking of going as a group, <laughs> Mel had a group activity at her house called a sleepover and you nor Destiny were invited, but Kiki was invited. And not only was Kiki invited, when she came, she brought a plus one called your business. So she sat up there talking all your business to a whole group of people at a party you weren't invited to that was hosted by your self-declared enemy. You need to go talk to your cousin. Letitia says, well, listen, I'm surprised that she was invited, but I'm kind of not because Mel knows that there's some issues between me and Kiki, and I feel like she's kind of exploiting that, but I'm going to go check, sis. I'm going to see what's up. Let me tell you something. Their next family reunion is going to be hell. So then we move on to Maurice and Marceau at Black getting ready to meet Louis. While they're waiting on Louis, they're having a drink and talking about the honeymoon from Maurice's perspective. And Maurice is letting us know that he just found out after a decade together that Kimmy likes to travel. You know what? You need to be embarrassed. It don't make no damn sense. To have been with a woman for as many years as Maurice has been with Kimmy. To go to therapy sessions where this woman is crying about. I watch other people get up and go to, tra to and travel and go to Paris and Puerto Rico and wherever else they want to go. And I'm just stuck home. And you're just now realizing 
when you were shamed into taking her on this three and a half year later honeymoon that um she likes to travel i i the trifling speaks for itself. I just can't. I can't. You got to do better. You got to do better. And Kimmy, you deserve better. Demand better. Please. Y'all done dated five, six, seven years. Y'all done been married three and a half years. And you just now finding out she like to travel. I, oh Lord, you know. So Lewis comes in. They all go sit down and they're about to hash out their beef from the reunion. So Lewis goes to start, you know, asking Marcel, What's your issue with me? Why would you go in so hard on me? Marcel said, hold on. Before you start, uh, take a shot. Because I ain't talking to nobody who ain't a couple sheets in the wind with me. So, Lewis took a shot and then took a shot. Bruh, why? What is your issue with me and mine? And Marcel um, kind of went off. Marcel goes into how, basically, you don't know me. You don't know my marriage. You don't know anything about me or know me well enough to comment on my marriage and make the comment I believe that they're in a bad marriage and so Lewis starts to address that you know he feels like he has the right to express his opinion just like anybody else and Marceau harps on that specific comment that was made in the confessional where Lewis and Tiffany were sitting together and they were talking about the lack of communication and loss of confidence in Marcel and Tisha's marriage. And Tiffany is the one who actually made the comment and said something about they don't communicate. And I think that's why they're not in such a great marriage or something to that effect. Marceau's issue is y'all are speaking like we are familiar enough and y'all have been around my marriage to be able to say that y'all know that I'm in a bad marriage. <laughs> Lewis goes into, well, look, hold on, player. That's the other thing, is you are harping on, I don't know you. And I done been here since 99. I've known you since before then. When I tell y'all Marcel turned into T.I., you might have seen me in the streets, but player, you don't know me. You know of me, but you don't know me. So, uh -huh. And Lewis had to cop to it. Lewis said, listen, you're right. And Marcel explains that what the difference is, is, you know, we've seen each other out, you know, we might have had drinks and kicked it and things like that just in mutual settings, but we've never developed a personal relationship. And because we don't have a personal relationship, you don't have the privilege to speak on my relationship. Now, my issue with Marcel is Marcel was very, very aggressive with Lewis. And the thing is, I think that Lewis comes from a point of being more humble. And Marcel is the kind of person you can't really be humble with, all right? Because he's going to run over you like he did Lewis. And he makes Lewis apologize to him. And Maurice gets, Maurice literally had to convince Marceau that you owe this man an apology and once convinced Marceau said okay I will apologize for my intensity boy bye bye moving on the next stop is Martel at his manager Mel Nika's office he walks in and she oh oh you startled me girl how and the camera's in there the camera's in there for you you know he uh, Either y'all gonna tell us this is a scripted show or y'all gonna tell us this is a scripted show because the playing like you're so surprised to see Martell, that thing about pick. And then this is the same scene over and over at different locations. So she goes into the, you have a whole lot of successful stuff going on. Let's run down all of your accomplishments. You see the poster on the wall for the wine you have coming out? All right, great. Let's talk about the cookbook. We've redesigned the cover because you had your naked ass on the cover before. And so we took that off to make it more palatable for families. Moving on to the book. The book signing that the kids weren't able to come to. Um, let's plan some new events for that. And Malnika suggests taking the kids to New York City and doing a Times Square billboard. Martel says, yeah, oh yeah, we can do that. We can do anything. Just make sure it's on my week, okay? Because we have established 
that um, the cooperation is not there yet. They move on to talking about planning his launch party, I believe, for his wine. And she's suggesting to have the launch party in Atlanta uh, because in Huntsville, people know him and they're going to tell him it tastes good whether it does or not. Aren't y'all past the whole development stage? Because why is y'all having a whole party to celebrate this wine that y'all ain't finished making? What if y'all get to Atlanta and the whole room say it's nasty? What then? So as they're talking about this wine release that's more of a wine tasting where they're hoping to get wine reviews where people will tell them if it's nasty right before they're getting ready to sell it. I, come on. They're talking about the potential guest list. Melnika starts to go through, you know, who all do you want to be there? And he's listing his friends. And she brings up the post and about how, you know, we want to make sure that none of that stuff is going to carry over and how we have to keep the brand clean of that. And he's like, no, you know, it was just a joke really between us. No, that was not a joke. But anyway, and Melnika tells him, listen, bro, if y'all want to have them kind of jokes, y'all needs to get y'all a group chat because every time y'all key key on the internet, it leaves a mess for me to clean up in real life, okay? And we is already struggling to sell you, and I cannot sell you if you keep going out there just throwing your ass around the internet for free, doing foolishness. And then after giving him this great breakdown about how he needs to stop with the foolishness on the internet, she asks, does he have any demands or requirements for his party? And he says he just wants, you know, sexy women there. And she responds with, can the linebackers come? Didn't you just say we was trying to dissociate him from the goings on of the internet? And you would just... Y'all is just hustling backwards. But you know what? Party hard. So we move on to Stormy and Tiffany meeting at somebody's restaurant's bar. <sighs> this whole get together worked my very last nerve, okay? Because I'm, first of all, I'm very surprised that Tiffany, Tiffany is trying. I don't know if it's a second season, something that happens for people, but she's trying and she's getting on my nerves less. But Stormy? worked my last nerve. So Tiffany walks in and let me tell you, Tiffany was showing shape on there. So all right, go ahead, Tiffany and your Birkinsky leggings, all right. So Tiffany gets to the bar and her and Stormy start talking and Stormy says, I really wanted to invite you out because you know, I felt bad because I never want to hurt anybody's feelings. And so Tiffany asked Stormy, well, did I say something to offend you? Stormy responds by saying, well, that's the thing. I wanted to get to know you outside of an ignorant comment you made. Shh. We'd have been done right there. Because see, the way that my mouth is set up, no, babe, I'm going to make you want to move furniture. Because who are you talking to? Stormy is rude. Like, let me tell you something. I get that she is young and successful and she's made a lot of money and she's self-made and all that. But if you equate being successful uh, or financial freedom with the freedom to be disrespectful to other people, you still have a whole lot to earn and learn. The way she talks to Tiffany blows my mind. I really feel like, like I get that she has this edge about her, but I feel like she does this with Tiffany because we kind of know Tiffany ain't about that life. You know, Tiffany is the type, she's going to do her slick shade and she says slick stuff out of her mouth that will make you want to knock her down. But 
she ain't gonna do the rock 'em sock 'em with you. Like that's not her thing. And so you can easily intimidate her with rock 'em sock 'em energy. And I feel like Stormy just Stormy is unnecessarily mean, aggressive, and nosy. And let me tell you something my mama used to say. Manners will carry you where money won't. You can have money and you can have success, but if you don't know how to talk to people, you are gonna run into a couple brick walls where you were looking for doors. And so Tiffany being who she is, decides to entertain this conversation. And she starts to explain to Stormy that, you know, you were a little bit feisty and Stormy cuts her off. No, 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 I'm not gonna let you put that word on me. We'll use a different word. We'll say passionate. Hold on, you ain't gonna call me ignorant and then tell me I can't call you feisty, bitch. Are you crazy? Like you have to be out your natural mind to think you can sit in somebody's face and say, you know, I wanted to get to know you outside of an ignorant comment you made. And then when they say, well, you know, you were a little bit feisty, I'm not gonna let you put that word on me. Girl, I got some words to put on you and they ain't feisty. Tiffany tells Stormy, you know, listen, in that moment, I don't think there was anything that I could have said to you that would have been well received. And Stormy said, yeah, you're pretty much right. So Stormy asked her about the transparency thing. Now, here's my thing. This is why I feel like Stormy is a fan on the show. You're not talking to her really about anything other than what you've seen on the show and what you would like an explanation for. Like, that's what this gives. But T Tiffany goes into this whole long, drawn-out explanation about how she feels like transparency has been overused at this point. And to make her intention clear, what she's speaking about is authenticity. That people are not necessarily authentic on this show. So as Tiffany's talking, Stormy cuts her off to say, listen, I zoned out about five sentences ago. Let me tell you something. I'd have been done talking to that girl right then and there. I mean, I had to come out my house. I got to look at my house. I had to come out my house to talk to you and have a drink. Okay. It's the unnecessary shade for me. Like, what is your issue with her? Other than I didn't like you on the show. So then we get to the final showdown of the show. Tisha arrives at Black, and in true Tisha fashion, she goes in there harassing Jalen, getting on his nerves about where is your suit? Why aren't you wearing a suit? And Jalen has to let her know, well, the issue is I've been here all day, and I haven't had a chance to leave and change my clothes, you overworking, underpaying boss, you. So Tisha backs up off him, and here comes Kiki dressed like, Dora the Crayola Explorer, she looked a damn fool in that thick ass wig and that bright striped sweat, girl. Tisha asked her, do you want a drink? I take a, um, a tequila. Basically, I don't even know, but I don't really even drink like that, but it's free, so I take it. You can just, Kiki gets on my damn nerves, okay? So Tisha and Kiki go sit down with their drinks to battle. And so Tisha says, well, you know, listen, I called you down here to talk because I talked to Kimmy. Kimmy told me that, you know, Mel had a Christmas party that you all were at and that, uh, yeah, I was the topic of your conversation. So I'd like to talk about that. Kiki said, yes, you came up in conversation. And Tisha says, well, you know, I thought me and you were good. I didn't think we had issues to the degree that you would be having a conversation about me amongst people that I don't know. So Kiki goes in the house, you know, I wasn't talking about you in a degrading way. And then in the confessional, she's saying, you know, Tisha is saying it was me talking her business when the truth is it was she talking my business. And I found out the harsh realities of an ugly truth because I trusted my cousin. Girl, shut the hell up. Let me tell you why Kiki is full of stuff. Kiki sits in Tisha's face and said, well, we were good until that stuff came up about you and Marceau talking about me and my personal business to Mel and Martel when Mel and Martel had that Christmas party some odd years ago. Here's my issue. 
Didn't we just see Kiki last season running up on Kimmy on behalf of Tisha? So y'all were okay enough last season for you to be running up in Kimmy's face, but why didn't you have my cousins back? You should have lied for her and whatever else. To fast forward to now, you have a retroactive issue with her about a party from five, six, seven years ago or some shit. Girl, what? This mess gets even more deep when Tisha starts asking, well, what's your personal business that we talk? And for some reason, ain't nobody willing to say what the personal business is. Now, I ain't wanting to go digging in people's personal business because you know personal business need to stay personal, okay? However, I did go scrolling through the little Facebook groups and stuff because you know y'all be finding shit and putting it on them internets. And I said, let me go see if anybody know anything. And I saw a whole lot of speculations and things. But uh, what I did see is a comment that Marceau made where he said he's not discussing it. He's not going to say what it is. And he hopes no one ever finds out because it's a personal matter. However, it was a personal matter that affected everyone, which is why said issue was discussed with Mel and Martel who were hosting this party and had invited Kiki and a guest to the party through Tisha and Marceau. Now, Here's where it gets even stickier. Tisha is carrying on, but she never said that Mel is probably just lying to manipulate an issue between us because me and Mel aren't getting along. And Kiki goes, well, that would have been believable if what she was telling me wasn't my actual business. But she knew my actual business. And so Tisha went from saying, I never said it, to Kiki saying, but what she told me was the truth. She could have only gotten it from you and you already apologized to me for this. Well, here's a bunch of issues. One, if she already apologized, y'all had already hashed this out, y'all had already made up to the degree that you was back fighting for your cousin like y'all do, like a, a family gang on TV. Why is it all of a sudden an issue today? What this speaks to is when your family way is to be messy and to lie and to, you know, not uphold truth and things like that, there is no honor amongst thieves. Y'all can't trust each other because y'all know that your way is untrustworthy. We don't do trustworthy stuff. We, you, you might not be able to take us at our word because we going to lie for each other. Like y'all have this issue because trust is not a fundamental factor in, in your family. It's just not how you do family. And so because y'all can't, y'all know y'all are trained to lie, we going to tell business and say we ain't told it. Or when we in front of people, we going to keep a united front and we'll fight when we get back to the house. That's how y'all get down. And that's why y'all can't get past this point of who said what and did you really say that and did you really say that and you said it to so-and-so. And then here's my thing. What the hell is this issue that was such an issue that it has to be kept super private but is it necessary for anybody to know that she is going to be around? Was her plus one El Chapo? Was she coming with a brick of the yayo? I, I mean, is she the plug? What in the hell is going on that if this girl come to this party, I got to tell her business. Let me tell you, I cannot stand Kiki, but she got a point. Unless it was some actual danger or issue. Why, like, why were you telling the host of this party her personal business? And if she had a personal issue that was so egregious that you felt like anybody whose home she was invited to needed to be warned and she was invited through you, why not just withhold the invitation?
it seems like a setup. It, I'm going to invite you to the party, but I'm inviting on the terms that I have to tell all her personal business so they know what kind of risk they're taking by inviting her. It's like, why would you do that? So while Kiki gets on my nerves, she does have a point. I mean, unless her plus one was El Chapo and she was coming with a brick of the yayo. Then you do need to let me know so I can tell her don't come in my house because I ain't got time for that. The feds might be following you and I don't need them kicking my door in by some bullshit you doing. All right. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. Moving on. So they're going back and forth about, well, what did we discuss? Tell me what I discussed with them because I don't want to put your personal business out there. Well, you already put my personal business out there. Tell me what I said so I can address exactly how I responded to that because I've been lied on. So now we are entangled in this whole issue of Tisha's defense is blocked behind telling Kiki's business. So we don't quite know whether Tisha was justified until we find out what Kiki's business was. Now, let me tell you, typically, typically, I would say stay out people's business. Everybody's personal business is their personal business. And we don't go, need to go digging in people's business. We don't need to know people's business. And we still don't, right? However, Kiki you cannot get your ass on probably one, on one of the most controversial reality TV shows running right now wanting to argue about somebody told your business but still wanting to keep secrets. You gonna have to go to hell. You wanted to come have arguments on a nationally televised platform about somebody telling your personal business, you should have kept this for the second day of the family reunion. Why would you come on TV to further expose business that's supposed to be so sensitive and so private? Why? 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 Fame is a drug and y'all is itching to get high because this is absolutely nuts. But you got all the answers in your wig and your Crayola stripes. Live your best life. And so Tisha decides, you know what? I'm going to take the Kimmy approach and I ain't going back and forth either. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and cut ties. And you could tell Kiki was kind of surprised by that. And she goes, well, you know, if that's what you want to do, we can do that. She said, yeah, because we don't seem to be getting anywhere. You want to keep having the same argument for something I already said, you know, I took accountability for. You don't want to go into detail about whatever the issue is you're having. And I'm not willing to go back and forth with you so Let's just call it a day. Let's just be done. Tisha gets up. She goes stomping out and she goes to call Kimmy. So as Tisha's outside talking to Kimmy on the phone, telling her how much of an explosion this was, how it went left, uh, Kiki comes walking outside and she walks up on Tisha and Tisha's telling Ki <laughs> Tisha tells Kimmy, hold on, Kiki walking up. Kiki said, who are you talking about me to now? And that's where this episode ends, right before these cousins get into their cat fight. I just, child, it is a time going on down there in Huntsville. They just have an absolute mess. They didn't stress me too, too bad this week. They just, I mean, they got on each other's nerves. All this bunch of damn confrontations. I'd have been cursed somebody out. They better than me. But that's it. That's all. That's the end of this episode. I really ain't got no more. Please be sure to uh, get down in the comments. Let me know. What do we, what is Kiki's secret? Do y'all know what the hell Kiki's secret is? I mean, you know, let me, let me mind my damn business. Let me stay over here. I'm sure it'll come out. Thank you so much for coming down here, listening to me, letting me get it off my chest. And I love you. I mean it. See you next time. Bye.